<sighs> okay, let's fix this. So, you built yourself a new computer. Probably looks a little nicer than my test bench, but it's basically the same parts. So hypothetically, maybe you've gone Ryzen 5000, maybe you've gone B550X570 motherboard, or even older generation. And you've gone to turn it on, you've plugged everything in, everything looks right, you press the power button, and you're getting no posts from the monitor. Uh, not only that, you've gone to inspect the motherboard, you've had a quick look around to see if you've forgotten anything obvious, and maybe you have an orange light on your motherboard, or you have a debug LED that's reading out two numbers or two characters. Interestingly enough, the orange LED actually signifies a DRAM issue, which is a little misleading in this case, as we know that it's not an issue with the RAM, as this has been tested with other hardware. But in your case, if you did want to test the RAM, it's very easy. You just plug one stick in, turn on the computer, and if it doesn't boot, take that stick out, try a different single stick of RAM, turn on the computer, and if it still doesn't boot, the likelihood is it's not a DRAM issue, it's something else. Now what that's likely going to be is a BIOS issue, is that you don't have an updated BIOS to support your fancy pants Ryzen 5000 CPU. So you have this issue and you likely don't have a Ryzen 3000 CPU to swap into your motherboard to update your BIOS to then plug back in your 5000 series CPU. So benefit to a lot of Asus motherboards is that you have a BIOS flashback function and we can utilize that to update your BIOS to get you up and running it's significantly faster because the alternative is you find a Ryzen 3000 series CPU, you swap it out, you update the BIOS. That's going to take you minimum hours if you have a friend close by worst date and we want to get you up and running in the next five minutes so let's do that let's talk you through how the bios flashback function is going to work so we need a usb asus recommends one gig or higher who owns a one gig usb anymore we also need the bios itself from asus so we're going to go get those in a second but let me talk you through how the bios flashback functionality actually works because it's quite interesting so what you do is you initiate the BIOS flashback functionality and your motherboard will boot up into a lower level software state than it typically does uh, for the sole purpose of loading that BIOS from your USB onto its BIOS chip. And then the next time that you boot, it will use the newer BIOS that's been loaded on from the steps that we're going to do. And this will accept your, your CPU if you've chosen the right BIOS version. So let's update your BIOS using BIOS flashback and get you up and running right after today's video sponsor, which is absolutely relevant to this topic and probably the next thing that you should do after this. Let's get into it. Are you stuck with the Windows watermark on your PC or looking to build a new rig soon? Well, you should check out today's sponsor, Pookies. With their link in the video description, just head over to their site, click the Windows 10 key, and don't forget to take 20% off your purchase with the coupon code TL20. I especially appreciate the speedy checkout with PayPal and that once the payment was complete, I had the key within 60 seconds. From then on, you just need to activate your PC. So thank you, Hookies, for sponsoring today's video and giving TechLens subscribers a discount. And if you need two keys, they offer a two key purchase for an even bigger discount. Just remember your TL20 coupon code for 20% off. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna to want to do is plug in your USB drive right here, and then you're going to want to format it. So call it whatever name you want. I'm just gonna name mine USB, and make sure it's set to FAT32. And then hit start, and that will format your disk. Remember, it will delete everything, so make sure you're comfortable with that. Next up, you're going to want to go to the motherboard page of your specific motherboard. So mine is the B550i Gaming. And then I'll head over to support. And then once there, you just want to click on driver and tools, go to BIOS and firmware, and then select the top one, which will be the most recent. And then once that's downloaded, the best thing to do is just stick it onto your desktop and then open it up in whichever compression decompression software you use. You might have extract all in the context menu here, um, but I use 7-zip, so I'm just gonna open it up and hit extract. Then once that's extracted, you'll see two files on the desktop, which is the BIOS and a BIOS renamer. So you want to double click on the BIOS renamer and you'll see right here to use BIOS flashback, copy the file onto your USB drive. Now what you want to do is make sure that you're copying it onto the root directory of your drive. And what that means is that it's not in any folder on your USB drive. It is on the very top level of your USB drive. So if we navigate over to the USB drive and copy it into it, remember no folders right at the very top, then that's it. You just want to eject your USB. Once you've removed it from this computer, you want to plug it into the back of your Asus motherboard where it says BIOS or BIOS flashback. 
Make sure that there is power going to the computer and hold the BIOS flashback button for about three seconds. You'll then see a flashing light appear. This took about four and a half minutes to complete for me, but it might take a bit more time or a bit less, depending on your motherboard, your BIOS version, etc. And you'll know when it's complete when the light stops flashing. Then remove your USB drive and that's it. It really is as simple as that. All that you need to do now is turn on the computer and it might go through a couple last steps of finalizing the BIOS, but otherwise you should just be up and running from here. So we will see that right about now. There we go, that's what we want to see. 5600X, six core processor, 16 gigs of memory. All that you need to do now is install Windows onto your SSD and hopefully we fix your issue for you. So for me, I can get back to the video that I was trying to make before I did this and got sidetracked, but that video, actually your hint has been here all along. A 5600X, an Intel stock cooler and this specific motherboard. What video? You'll find out. But if you're new here, go ahead and click on the channel name, check out a few other videos. And if you enjoy them, go ahead and get subscribed with notifications to make sure that you don't miss upcoming videos. Otherwise, a like is always appreciated and I will see you in the next one.